Hey, what's going on, nation? In this week's episode of the Versus series, we're going to see which exercise will help you build a bigger upper chest, the incline barbell bench press or the reverse grip barbell bench press. If you missed the last episode where we compared the front squat versus the back squat, I'll post a link to that down in the info section below, so make sure you guys check it out. Now, we already talked a great deal about the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor and how they function in the barbell bench press versus the dumbbell bench press video. So if you guys want to learn more about origins and insertions and how these muscles work, I'll post a link to that video in the info section below as well because today we're just going to focus on one specific area of the pectoralis major and that is the clavicular head or the upper chest. Remember guys, the clavicular head originates on the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle and inserts on the lateral lip, oops sorry, the lateral lip, I was pointing to the wrong place, of the bicipital groove of the humerus and anterior lip of the deltoid tuberosity and for, the mo and for most of us, this is an area we desperately want to target to help give the chest a fuller and rounder look. But which exercise is best for targeting this area? Well, let's find out starting with the barbell incline bench press. The barbell incline bench press is an exercise used by most gym goers specifically to target the upper chest area. We are still working the entire pectoralis major, but more emphasis will be placed on the clavicular head, so right through here. Throughout the movement, you will also be activating your triceps brachii and your anterior deltoids as synergistic muscle groups and the short head of your bicep brachii will assist as a stabilizer throughout the movement as well. To perform the barbell incline bench press, the first thing you want to do is set up your bench so it's at a 30 to 45 degree incline and it's going to be up to you to, to basically mess around with the incline to see what feels more comfortable to you. And then once this is set up, I actually would rather you guys get into position and then make sure that it feels right with the bar with no weight. So get into your position that you use for your incline barbell bench press and just make sure you can unrack and you can bench properly and re-rack the bar because a lot of times what happens if you set it up and you push the bench too far back, once you start benching, you can hit the barbell on the J-hooks and ruin your entire set. Once that's all done, then toss on your weights. Now another thing I want you guys to keep in mind when doing this exercise, now with any bench press movement, you're supposed to retract your shoulder blades, okay? This puts you in the correct uh, posture to be able to get the full descent and then get a full extension with every single repetition. If you do this exercise, and I see this happen a lot when guys do an incline barbell bench press, is that if your shoulder blades are retracted and then at the top of the movement you push too far and you flatten out your back, that changes the entire range of motion of the barbell. And what it can actually do is, without you even realizing it, cause you to bring the bar down more over your shoulders, which is also going to increase your elbow flare, and this can put a lot of pressure in your shoulders as well. So keep it retracted, go to the top, be careful you don't flatten out and then come back down and then end up hurting yourself and putting a lot of pressure through the shoulder area. So, now that that's out of the way, to perform the movement, what you're going to do is lay back, keep your glutes planted on the bench. Whenever you do any bench press movement, your glutes stay on the bench. Keep your knees pointed out, feet flat, out your back, retract your shoulder blades, keep your core nice and tight, and what you're going to do is grab the, the bar just outside of shoulder width. I like to put my pinky fingers on the line right here. Once in place, unrack the weight, take in a breath, keep your core nice and tight, and then press back up and that's when you let the air out. And the reason why you're taking in a breath and keeping your core tight is because that's going to allow you to keep your body basically from your torso down as one solid piece to give you as much pushing power as possible through the bar. Now you're also going to notice that as I perform the movement, as I bring it down, my elbows aren't flaring backwards. They're actually staying in position underneath my wrists and they're kind of turned in a bit towards my torso. And then from here I push back up and I'm keeping them pushed forward. One thing you don't want to do, because this can happen to you even if you have your shoulder blades retracted, is you don't want to have too much elbow flare, because with too much elbow flare you guys can already see the entire range of motion of the barbell changing and when you have elbow flare, you're actually pushing more through your shoulders. 
And this can cause a lot of shoulder pain because what's actually happening as you flare your elbows is the humerus, so your upper arm bone, is squeezing the rotator cuff tendons against the AC joint. And when that happens, you're basically irritating your shoulders on every single repetition. So, if this exercise bothers your shoulders, it's not because the exercise is bad for you, it's because you have too much elbow flare. But there is something to be said to have a bit of elbow flare on the way up. And what I mean by that is, this is more of an advanced power lifting move. And as you guys get stronger and better with the, with the exercise, you can do it as well. Is that as you come down, keep those elbows forward. And as you're pushing up, it's okay to flare your elbows out a little on the way up to get a bit more power into the movement. But like I said, that's a bit more of an advanced technique. So if you've never done it before, I suggest trying it first with light weight and getting used to it before implementing it into your regular working sets. Now another thing you want to keep in mind during this movement is your hand position. If you grab the barbell too wide, you will be engaging more of the muscles in the surrounding areas of your chest and you'll greatly reduce the ability to shorten the muscle at the top of the movement. To ensure maximum pec activation, you have to find a grip that's closer to shoulder width or just outside of shoulder width apart to use when you bench. This will ensure that you get the full stretch at the bottom of the movement and the full contraction at the top. Next up is the reverse grip barbell bench press. During this movement, we will also be working the entire pectoralis major, but we'll be placing more emphasis on the clavicular head as well. Because of the hand position, you will still be activating your triceps brachii and the interior deltoids as synergistic muscle groups, but you will, feel, yeah, you will feel more tricep activation when compared to the standard overhand grip. Also, the short head of your biceps brachii will be assisting as a stabilizer throughout the movement as well. To perform the reverse grip barbell bench press, you're going to set yourself up the same exact way you would if you were doing the standard barbell bench press. So, you're going to have your feet flat in the ground, you're going to push your knees out, keep your glutes on the bench, arch your back, and retract your shoulder blades. The main difference here is that you're going to have your palms facing forward as opposed to palms facing away. And you're also going to have an outside shoulder width grip on the barbell. If you guys grab too close, you're going to activate your triceps more throughout the movement. So you want to make sure that your grip is outside of shoulder width. So to unrack the barbell, first get in place. And it's easier to do this movement to get the bar off the rack if you position your head directly underneath the barbell itself. Then put your hands on here. I like to put my, pretty much my middle finger on the line on the bath to get myself into position. Once in place, remove the barbell from the J hooks and then while keeping your wrist straight and your elbows kind of pointed out and keeping your upper arms parallel to each other the entire time, you're going to bring the weight down and then push back up straight over your chest. You guys don't want it to fall into the habit of coming down like this and then pushing up over your face, okay? That's not the movement. The movement is to activate your chest. So come down over your chest, push up over your chest, and if you guys need help keeping the barbell in the same position throughout the movement, before you start bringing it down, hold it in the air, and then pick a point on the ceiling to line the bar up with. Once you do, bring it down, and then push up, and bring it back to that same spot every single repetition and this will help you guys keep the barbell in line. Now if you are properly setting up for the exercise, you should be able to rack and unrack the barbell on your own. But if you are having a hard time, I do have some alternative methods you can try, especially once you start lifting heavier weight. The easiest solution would be to have a spotter help you. But if you don't have a spotter, you can try unracking the weight using the standard bench press position and then turn your hands around while letting the barbell almost rest on your chest at the bottom of the movement. Another solution would be to use a power rack, and this is the safest solution if benching heavy with no spotter. First, what you're going to do is set up the rack so that the barbell rests across your chest with enough room for you to get out from underneath the barbell when your back is flat. 
This is because when you perform the movement, you will have an arch in your back which will raise the height of your chest during the movement a few inches so if you fail, you can simply lay flat and be safe. So once the racks are set up, you're good to go. Now for the conclusion, guys. Which exercise targets the clavicular head or the upper portion of the chest more? Well, the answer is the reverse grip bench press. Believe it or not, studies have shown that when compared to the standard bench press with an overhand grip, that the reverse grip bench press muscle activity of the clavicular head increased by 30%. That is a huge jump in engagement just from turning your hands around. Now don't get me wrong guys, the standard bench press is still a great exercise and does have its place. It's just that now you know that it targets more of the sternocostal head of the pec major and if you're trying to build your upper chest, it is not the right exercise to be using. As for the incline barbell bench press, studies showed that when compared to the standard bench press, muscle, muscle activity in the clavicular head only increased by 5%. However, there was a huge jump in activity in, in the interior deltoids by about 85%, which, if your goal is to build an upper chest, doesn't really help you out. So in simple terms, this means that if you are trying to build a bigger upper chest, the reverse grip barbell bench press is six times more effective than the barbell incline bench press. That means the clear winner here is the reverse grip barbell bench press. Now my suggestion to you would be on your next chest workout, replace the incline bench press with the reverse grip barbell bench press and perform four sets of 10 to 12 repetitions with only a 60 to 90 second rest period in between each set. Now a few things I want to add here real quick, if you guys do research online, especially with the incline barbell bench press. In this video, I tell you to have a grip that's just outside of shoulder width to maximize the shortening of the muscle at the top and the stretch at the bottom. You will see articles online where they tell you to grab as wide as possible to lift as much weight as possible. And that's where the key difference is. If you're a power lifter and trying to improve your overall strength on this lift, yes, you want to grab as wide as possible to shorten the distance the bar has to travel. However, if you're trying to build muscle, you can see there's a clear difference in the, you're stretching the muscle out pretty much the same at the bottom, but when you come to the top, you're not shortening the muscles. You're not getting as much muscle engagement. Now, if you were to grab closer and go down and go up, you can see my boobs moving forward a lot, okay? More muscle engagement. Just wanted to toss that out there for you in case you guys do some research on your own. I hope you guys learned a lot today, and if you have friends that need some upper pec work, you better send them my way. Now, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more great content, and if you missed any of the previous episodes in the Versus series, I'll put a link to the entire playlist down in the info section below. And for those of you who are looking for a 12-week program to build muscle and strength, check out my transformation challenge. Full routines complete with PDF downloads, photos and videos, no cookie cutter, cookie, cutter, cookie cutter routines here guys, just workouts designed to get you in and out of the gym efficiently with great results. I will toss a link to that info section below for you as well. Hope you guys have a great weekend and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.